Hey there, and welcome back to the next installment of the Pattern Library series. My name is Jonathan with the Generate Press team, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through customizing some of the sections that you add to your page out of the Generate Blocks Pattern Library. So in the previous episode, we showed how to add as many patterns as you need from the library. So if I expand my document overview here, you can see I have a number of sections, hero, features, gallery, team, and so on. These are all pulled from our pattern library. So the first thing I wanna do is just touch on kind of the general structure that you'll find. And there's a link in the video description to this article in our documentation, which describes where the styling for these patterns are actually going to get pulled in from. So there's three main places. You're gonna have your theme styles, then your local block styles, and lastly, the global styles. So theme styles, as you can see here, is going to be things like your font families, styling for H1, H2, and paragraph elements. Then local block styles will be things that you set uniquely to that individual block. And then of course, there are global styles, which we can define and then use all around our site. There's more information here on this page for you to look at each of the global styles and what parameters are attached to those. So feel free to take a look at this. Now you'll notice that since the last episode, it looks a little bit different here. And that is primarily because I went ahead and changed my generate press fonts to different font families so we could see how that works. So in the customizer, I went to the typography section. I added two fonts from Google, which is Rubik and Roboto Mono. Then I set our body font to the Rubik and then both of our H1 and H2 to the Roboto Mono style. And that's what you can see here. So I haven't actually changed the styling of any of these headline blocks. They've just automatically picked up the styles that are coming from the theme, everything from font weight to font family, all those kinds of things will be inherited automatically for you. So I went ahead and bumped up the font weight and the size of this headline. And of course, if I were to go back to my pattern library and grab something else out of it, then what we can see is that that change is going to be reflected inside of the pattern library because it's picking up on these styles for us. If I go to the hero section, we can see that these are using H1s. So my heavy font weight on all of the H1s is applied as well as the correct font family because these are all live renders. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of the pattern library and then inside of the customizer over here, I also set a couple of colors for my color palette. So what I can do is if I take a look at our button, you can see that out of the box here, there is a global style called GBP button primary. And so if I wanna customize that, I just simply click on it. I can go to the backgrounds button, go to background color, and then let's just set it to kind of this darker color here, our global color two. And now what's gonna happen is of course our background color updates and then all other instances where that global style and that button exist, it's going to be updated across our site. Do we have any more? We sure do. Multiple instances of that all through this page content and all over the pattern library. So let's, for example, say that we want all of our H1s. Let's click on this headline global style. We're gonna change the typography color here to this deep kind of reddish color. In fact, maybe let's actually change it to something that we can see more clearly. Then what I wanna do real quick is just update this global style. Then we'll go back and select the pattern library. Then we will choose hero. And you can see that our colors for both the headline and the button have updated. Super handy for when you start customizing the patterns and you wanna make sure that those changes are reflected both now and for future patterns you might bring in. That's perfect, that's exactly what's happening here. Now you'll also notice that when I hovered over this button, it has a black color, which we don't want. So what I wanna do is show you how to actually adjust the hover state, which is the CSS pseudo selector of hover. So what I can do is just, let's go ahead and close out of that. Then we'll click on our button. And in this case, the shortcut to the hover selector is right here. You can also get to that by going to the more manage selectors button, and then you'll find it right here as well. And then what we'll do is go to the backgrounds tab and we can see that the hover background is set to black. But of course, let's just go ahead and make it something like this lighter global color here. So when we hover, we can see that nice little color change effect. And so manipulating the hover states or any other custom selector that you want is possible through this. So if you're interested in learning more about that, you can click the video linked in the description. So the next thing I wanna take a look at is some of the section paddings that exist. So if we click on this feature section, we can see that there's a global style called GBP section. And if we click into that, then there is some spacing here set up as seven rim top and bottom, and then 40 pixels left and right. Now, this is going to be shared in a lot of different places through these patterns. So if we click on the gallery, we can see that same global style exists. Pricing also has it, team has it, testimonials. In fact, every single section on this website, all these patterns except the heroes share it. So what we can do is if we go to GBP section, and perhaps let's say seven rim is too much for you, we could go ahead and just crank that down to three rim top and bottom. 
update this. And then when we go take a look on the front end, now everything is a lot more compact. Another thing that's worth pointing out is that in generate press, we also have a container max width. So if we go to layout and container, just for example sake, I set this to 1440 pixels. And if we go to any of our sections, and let's say we wanted to create kind of a max width layout, we could go ahead and just click on the max width, use global, and that's gonna bring in the one from generate press if that's your active theme. If not, then it's going to bring in your generate blocks max width. And that can be found if we go to generate blocks, settings, then instead when generate press is not your theme, this global max width setting is what's going to apply there. So you can see that through the combination of different theme styles, local styles, and global styles, you can start to get the patterns looking exactly as you want. And then you don't have to redo those styles multiple times because all the patterns share a similar framework. If we scroll down in this page, we'll find the section called visual pattern index. This is gonna show all the global styles that will exist on those patterns and then kind of where they're used. So you can see the correlation here with number three, that's going to be GBP section. And it's gonna show you the outline of all those existing global styles on the patterns. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with adding your own global styles to these as well. So if for instance, in the team section, you wanted to add your own card class to this, you certainly can do that. You have however much flexibility here that you need. With that, you now know how to add patterns and customize them on your site. We hope this has been helpful for you. Let us know if you have any questions and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. My name is Jonathan. Thanks so much for watching.